Hi, I'm Christine. Today we're going to be looking at some of my favorite looks from the Met Gala 2023. I thought there were so many beautiful looks at this event. I was quite surprised to see there were reviewers who found the fashion overall a bit boring. Not me. I found it very hard to choose which looks we were going to include in today's video. Possibly those reviewers were directing their comments at how well the look stayed true to the theme, which was Karl Lagerfeld, a line of beauty, or maybe their comments were related specifically to the garment. But there's another element here. These clothes are not on hangers. They're not on mannequins. They're on people whose own coloring profoundly affects how well the clothing looks and how well they look wearing it. And that's what we're going to be talking about. I am a color analyst. I'm not a line or style expert, but for a costume ball such as this, we're gonna relax the rules a little bit. We're gonna just be in the audience and say what we see. Our first person today is Viola Davis wearing custom Valentino. She's wearing a feather fountain. She's wearing a fuchsia feather fountain. Those dappled feathers in the shiny upper part of the dress there, those are just really good. They're so well done. I think they're my favorite part, right below the feather spray. She has great presence behind the feathers, meaning that she's peeking out from behind them, but she's not being lost at all. She looks cute, happy, healthy. The whole thing is adorable. It made me want to smile. Skin tones beautiful and genuine face color same as the shoulders and the arms the bone structure meaning the facial shape the nose the cheekbones they're refined they're focused sharper than we might normally see with viola highlights need to be light enough and shadows need to be dark enough to form true edges and clothing colors in harmony with our own will support that they don't have to be black and white whatever color family they belong to here fuchsia but when they're not able to form a true edge, what happens is that shapes can look wide or round or blunt. I think we saw that in our Jonathan Van Ness video, or the bone structure can appear quite heavy. I don't find the color overtakes her. I don't think it looks candy. I don't think it looks neon. I definitely don't think it looks like children's clothing. I don't find it looks frivolous. When I look at the face, right, you always look at the person and think about the colors. Clothes are chosen to make the human look better, not make the clothes look better. I wondered if the feathers might be better down around the hem and then put more of the shiny dapples up around the top in the bodice, but I find it it's exciting, it's untraditional. Maybe it's unexpected to start with fireworks rather than end with them, and the texture of the feathers is very flattering to her skin tones to the texture in her hair that works really well with them. I love the transition to simplicity through the skirt. So it starts out complicated and then the color stays the same, but transitions to very simple through the skirt, follows her shape and allows her to move, which this body appears to want to do. I have respect for clothing that allows women to be as comfortable as men. And it's lovely how a single color in all these te textures and shapes creates all this visual interest and is so complete. Her skin tone, eye, hair color, they all provide gorgeous contrast that completes the dress. Color flatters the skin tones. It doesn't glow back pink under the jaw. It would on many people. It means that she's controlling the color. It's not controlling her or imposing itself on her colors. You can see here the light dark relationships. If you squint your eyes, you can see where the lightness and darkness are happening that are creating the focused edges in her facial bones, as the edges darken, they become sharp, slim, tight. It creates a vibrancy where shapes have energy, the same as colors can. Hair color helps, it's beautiful, beautiful next to the skin, repeats those shadow colors that are having so much lovely effect in the face. The cheek color is orangey brown. It's standard at these events, but what I wanted to point out here was that it looks more orange next to the fuchsia. Lip color seems more neutral, plum brown. It's that cheek color that I'm noticing more. Next is Lily James wearing Tamara Ralph Couture. Words that come to mind, regal, remote, and dangerous. It's a lot of black and in this fabric like leather or vinyl, there is a definite danger element, but she's not backing down, which is great. If you're gonna do it, do it. Woman steps into her power, her face is visible, her skin colors are clean. 
It's a nice enough dress. Some might say homogeneous, but I see shape and detail within the black. It's not a big empty space. And the color simplicity meets a kind of stillness in her face. And yet there's a lot of power in the dresses right up there with it. What's fascinating, I think, is um, what's going on with Lily wearing this or my reaction when I saw it was I, I had a real I didn't see this coming moment, which I love. The eyes are intense. Diamond choker is a nice choice. It disappears a little bit. I actually think it could be a bit bigger. I love these transformations. She's literally in a different light with this hair color. Lily's so beautiful. I mean, she wears many hair colors well. I've only seen her in roles as a blonde. And as a blonde, I mean, she could be cast to sell summer drinks, ads for that kind of thing. Roles of someone cute, pretty, and maybe finding themselves. This woman's grown beyond that. The other thing about cute and pretty hair color is that those are the clothes that go with it. Now, at some point in her life, they may diminish a woman and then it's time for her to make a choice. I read a quote by James Clear, the person who wrote Atomic Habits, and he said, it's hard to grow beyond something if you won't let go of it. Well, this lily has let go of something. I don't normally enjoy hair dyed darker than natural. It pales the skin, it makes the hair look artificial, but this look comes together. Natural hair color, Probably medium dark brown for Lily, I'm not sure, but I could see her in a dark red rose gold as well. Eyeshadow color's pretty good. At least it's not rusty or muddy. And you can see similar tones in the hair, or almost. I mean, they could have gone with ice and gray, like in the choker as eyeshadow, but the effect can become too forbidding. There's a fine line between remote and severe or hard, which is why many winter colored women don't enjoy unalleviated gray and charcoal in eyeshadow. And then they go to beachy nudes because they're trying to find natural and they're trying to repeat what they see as yellow tones in the skin, interpreting it as warmth. It isn't, but the impact isn't there. And what they need are winter colors that are closer to more natural skin tones, like cool dark browns, like pink tinged silvers, like icing sugar rather than flat white. The lip color seems earthy, almost murky and with this amount of black brown lips are kind of taking a step back playing it safe whereas a clear red or a sheer plumberry gloss that could look subtle it could look natural it doesn't have to be this opaque red statement and it would be cleaner and fresher and more interesting i think this look is not about playing it safe and the brown eyeshadow kind of already does that the mouth is such an important feature in appearance I don't find this brown is adding. I think it's just there. Emma Chamberlain is wearing Mew Mew. One of the few people who wore color well, there was a lot of black and white at the event, which did stay true to the theme. And here she's nice in this blue, almost despite the hair color and the makeup. We'll get to that. Soft blue or blue green, beautiful presence next to the face. Supports the colors in the eyes. You can see that right away. And has a, a gentle loveliness that brings out the delicate heart shape of the face. Love the silver top under the jacket. Has a curving shimmer. It's not stiff with big mirrors like a disco ball. It's a lot more intricate and it reflects the blue garment a little bit. That was a nice choice for Emma. The jacket seems kind of roomy in the arms and shoulders. It's not really relevant to the color, I don't think, because the shapes that a garment makes are very relevant to how well the color is working, but that's just an observation. This would be a pretty color to have in jeans. The belt around the hips, it gives a sense of a young person just looking comfortable in her choices at a major event. Age appropriate matters. You can't make up a 20 year old woman and a 40 year old woman and a 60 year old woman exactly the same way, even if they're in the same season, because it, it doesn't always work that well. And so for someone young, getting all complicated looks to dress up and the person just ends up looking younger. This is great. I mean, it's like a crop top and jeans and the look doesn't take itself too seriously. I see Emma as a summer colored person. I find this makeup is wearing her and the dress. Silver is gorgeous on summers. Blue and white is a pairing I love on them. It's like they're basic neutrals, like white and black for winters, like candlelight beige and burgundy or maroon in autumns, like ivory and honey brown for springs. The pure white fringe 
along the bottom of the jacket, well placed away from the face, because as great as it might be with the hair color and the eyeliner, it might be very frosty right next to Emma's face. Keeping on the theme of transformations, I wanted to show you this picture. This is a definite don't try this at home moment, but here's Emma from four years ago. Now I'm not sure what the natural color of her hair is today, it may be dyed much of the time, but this looks about right and the hair for the event and the brows have been colored well past her natural darkness level. And Emma's natural colors and age might not balance that as well as Lily's did that we just saw. With a lot of makeup and youth, it is amazing what you can do without the makeup but the brows that we just saw might be a lot in a way that our natural brow color just wouldn't be. And then for today's event, I have got to admire this makeup artist's work. The way the facial colors blend into the natural skin tone right at the collar, you see this really subtle kind of transition. I mean, picture it. They start with Emma we just saw, natural Emma, whose hair is now black or very near. Now they have to make her visible and smooth out the transition into soft blue clothing. So great to go with delicate silver and then add a tiny little bit of sharper white to kind of integrate this hair color and this makeup. Blue eyeshadow, well sure, you know, for an event like this, the blue and white theme would have been lovely. Continued in sheer watermelon or berry lips, but that wasn't today's choice. The cheek and lip color, they do seem kind of orange for any other color in Emma or in this whole picture and I mean I mention it again because it's especially confusing with the coolness of the outfit, the coolness of the eye color, the coolness of the hair color. I mean Earth is just from another world. Picture the necklace, the chain of it is gold. I mean, you'd have to see it but I really do vote for silver and, and I still love the outfit and I love the jewelry and I love the headband. Jenna Ortega is wearing Tom Brown. So many themes here goth, collegiate, kind of in the saddle shoes, Victorian, and Lagerfeld carry through each item and each texture. Really well adapted to Jenna who wears them all separately and together extremely well. I think this is elaborate. I find it simple and then it's a little bit tough just like Jenna. It's tangled and it's twisted but it's not obscure. It's kind of humorous not all sophisticated and, and self-important, which would be the wrong kind of complicated. Black and white are good for Jenna. She's wearing the clothes. She's not disappearing in this or looking aggressive in these colors. Proportions of light to dark are good. There's enough white. There's enough placement to shine in the shoes, the cape lining. Provides light dark contrast, like light being what gives darkness context or meaning. Sometimes bodies that are made of small parts are dressed in big areas of solid color. And they look to me, it looks like they're drowning in billowing fabric. It's like sheets on a clothesline in the wind, you know, and then the color becomes bed sheet boring. Emma, whom we just saw, Emma Chamberlain was similar where great big areas of that blue it would look like the sails of a boat and we'd lose the point of the color because then we get distracted thinking about the shape but in small narrow shapes the color became more beautiful. This body also appears to be made of small parts and color and detail are used to create small areas of variety and so the simplicity the very simple neutrality of black and white just becomes super interesting like there is a lot going on. Her facial contour is lovely. No dark dusty edges along the jaw or the nose but shapes do come to a point or a line. The nose has a really pretty shape. Shadows are present in the face appropriately placed. They don't look hollow or gaunt. This is her own hair and eyebrows, or it would have to be very close. You don't need hair dye to balance black. This is fantastic. We can see warmer tones of brown in the hair, and then you can see um, cooler purpley browns, which is great to take advantage of in lip and eye colors. Subliminal, but people sense that something good is happening. There are just so many rewards for the eye in this garment that adding color and makeup is not needed and I actually appreciate the simplicity in the makeup also with Jenna's age. 
um, we can see Jenna rather than Jenna's makeup. That gold, that's a good shade of yellow for the skin, not too yellow. And I think those pearls have good presence. Nice warm and cool whites in the bow detail between the bow and the chain as well. That's very interesting to look at. The manicure is fabulous and fun. I like those little crisp areas of black at the tip of the fingernails. Much more lightweight than all black nails. And I don't even think it looks all that costume. It's so good with her energy that I would love this if I saw her in the regular world. It's that Goldilocks sense of just enough and not too much that is appreciated everywhere. Ashley Graham is wearing custom Harris Reed. It's got an old world sort of glamour going on here. And then there's this Jetsons effect. You remember the cartoon? Maybe you have to be of a certain age. <laughs> Those wing-like elements, they make me think of rings around a planet. It's not even that vaporous. Fins around a spaceship. It's very modern. I really admire when references to the past are brought forward, brought beautifully forward into the modern world. When I hear someone say, I like anything, clothes, hair, a color, a book, a city, a food, whatever it is. My next question is, what you like about it? Because the answers are amazing. Either it's the same thing expressed in lots of different ways, or people have completely different reactions. So either way, it's very interesting. So this is a good pink. What do you like about it, Christine? Oh, well, it looks pink and pink enough. See, they start processing in a different way. The color looks clean. It's not white, faded, weak, dingy, inexpensive, neon, children's party dress. None of that is coming across. It's not off under the face. It stays true next to the black velvet, which is saying something. Those are big areas of solid darkness with weight in the texture. Facial edges are clean and visible. This is very important because you can tell I talk about it all the time. You can see various shine levels in the pink. And then with the black, it doesn't look greasy plastic, oily. It's normal for her. It's just glamorous, kind of like silvered pink, maybe like metallic pink. Be beautiful highlight anywhere. She could put it in her cheek. She could put it as a eyeshadow. The white reflections in the pink, meaning the reflections go to white. They don't stop at some version of gray. Creates a very nice contrast with the black without her actually wearing black and white. I'm very partial to pink. To me, it represents feminine power without aggression just power without aggression and it seems an authentic expression of this person not putting words into her mouth but i would like clothes to say that about me she has similar structural shapes in the dress and the facial bones the swoop in the jaws and the wings of the bodice the bow of the lips is in the bodice as well actually the scale of the details suits the scale of the person i guess tall side because here larger areas of solid color blocks appears to work very well. I think we saw that in our Jason Momoa video as well towards the end. The thickness and the weight of the two fabrics, the, the satin and the velvet both have a certain gauge to them. They're not flimsy fabrics. And so together they give the folds and the edges some thickness and weight, which is repeated in the bones of the face. Like picture if the edges of the dress were small and crisp or thin and floppy, that facial structure might look blunt by comparison, but it relates back very well to the woman wearing it, and so they look good together. I enjoy the simplicity of the eye makeup. With gowns like these, too much going on. It becomes irritating. It becomes dated, maybe. Like, where am I supposed to be looking? You know, like a sparkly windmill. And the dress has a simplicity to it that I am happy it's being repeated in makeup and in jewelry. As pearls go in the earring, cool white with diamond, very nice choice, especially around the face and would be better for her than a warm or a soft white, I think. Around the face, white is fantastic for everyone. When you're wearing whites that are very near your own, for the clarity of the skin, the white of the eyes, the white of the teeth, the vibrancy of the hair, white's an amazing color. And so much can be done with accessories when there's not any white to speak of in the clothing. Next we have Christina Ricci wearing Fendi. There were many great looks at this event, as I said, enough to do a second video of some that were almost great, but our main emphasis filter is who chose good clothing color for their own coloring, and I decided this was better than almost. There are yellow green tones in the color 
of this gown, more say than if you think about airplane silver or maybe the curtain behind me. And they share something with her skin tones, yet it's comfortable with the colors of the skin and in the neck and the arms, meaning they're not changing each other. They're not supposed to be identical. That's called disappearing into your clothes. They are letting one another be without any detracting effects. Her facial features well-defined, face is sculpted, bones are elevated, skin is illuminated without being oily. I don't find this effect severe. Those yellow green reflections, that can be part of how bright winter creates warmth, reflects light. Different from bright spring, also yellow green, just more yellow. Different from dark winter, also a cool neutral type of winter, but the reflections are going to be a little bit more red orange or even mulberry. Very faint because in neutrals that's how color appears. The one thing that's distracting for me here is the color of the hair. Black brown's a great choice, but the density of the, hot, the dye is high next to a more delicate face. And then you have this heavy blunt edged fringe that seems to magnify that. The eyebrow color's pretty, repeats some of the colors in the eye. And if you can't take the weight off the color density with dye when you're working with black brown, don't go lighter, don't go warmer. Always stay true to your colors. The same as lipstick. Stick to the color that's right for you. If you want to wear sheer, that's great. If you want to wear opaque, that's great. Transparency is not a way to measure color, is what I'm saying. And so, stick with black brown, but consider hairstyle as a way to take density or weight off of hair color. Also, hairstyles that pull the color back off the face, so you have the color that you should have without all the weight and the darkness around the face. Interesting cooler blue eyeshadow here too. It makes good contrast with the dress, continues the general theme of coolness, and repeated as we're about to see in the purse. Purse color, terrific. More cool and steely than the dress. Nice with the coolness of the skin tone. You don't, you don't have to see the face. You can see this in the arm. Excellent with the nails as the black detail. Here I'm happy that it's the whole black nail because there's no other black in this outfit opposite to what Jenna Ortega was wearing. Love the chain of the purse. Folks may ask why I didn't include Anne Hathaway because those safety pins seem to me too yellow next to the skin tones. It felt a bit awkward to me. I find this cleaner. Shout out to shoes that don't hurt or deform the feet. Clothes should no longer have permission to do that to anyone. Something sweet here. There's a Dorothy association. Kind of click your heels together three times and something good's going to happen. And it suits Christina's youthfulness, this style, really beautifully. Alton Mason is wearing Karl Lagerfeld Couture. Person gets their white right. I chose people whose garment looked memorable for making the wearer look better because out weirding everyone else is a different kind of memorable or using color in ways that would look odd no matter where you use them like taupe and black for example certain kinds of taupe just weird in the sense that those colors come from different worlds and it doesn't work at a gala any more than at an office these styles are intended for party, not being taken seriously at the office, but color that works stays the same. I don't find this weird in the slightest. I think it's gorgeous. And Karl Lagerfeld did have bridal as one of his themes. And this is a very modern and interesting version of bridal. Color style both suit this person. Beautiful garment, the high neck, the structure in the shoulder. There's so much detail of texture and design throughout. It's ideal that it's one color. Perfectly bridal, skin tone provides contrast. I wondered if a person of light skin tone and hair color might choose another white. Situation we'd have to see to decide. The way the boots and the bouquet look like foam. The body is also delicate and strong, and so it's really brilliant how the garment recognizes both in him. So the white's good. Why? What makes it good? I can see him. I can see him really well. The real him, is anything distorted here? Yeah, I can see the real him. I don't think he and the white are changing one another. I think they're making one another better. The eyes are crisp. The bones around the eyes are focused. Light and shadow have a good relationship in the face. Despite the white, his face is able to create shadows that are dark enough to sharpen edges. Lip shape is beautiful. The veil over the face and chest, it adds a kind of sparkle twinkle texture to the skin. 
I really love that. I think that's my favorite part. And there's a regular pattern of sparkles, at least over the face, which works because his features are a regular pattern. So that veil just seems very right for him. Stormzy's wearing Burberry. Roses are a good size. The color and black together make nice use of color contrast. And the cut of the suit supports the man and also supports the print or supports the, the way color is used. It's only one color here. It's only blue violet in an interesting print. I mean, imagine describing this. Yes, he wore a suit. It was all over purple roses. And yet here we are. Someone at Burberry imagined it. They chose this color and size in the print and they made a memorable suit. Blue violet is repeated in the skin tone. It's also amazing when it repeats in the hair. Many people in these coloring groups have that effect, can have that effect. This is a bright color, but it doesn't look particularly bright. Picture if the suit were, or the sweater, were kind of dove gray. Those flowers would leap right off of the background, but this is perfect. Bright and black is a really excellent option to light and black for winter colored people. He looks peaceful, he looks strong, he looks very contained within himself. Imagine the frenzy that's going on around him, but he's still. And I appreciate him as the wearer and the background of the suit. Really like this choice of accessories. They're also strong and solid and contained and still. There's a lot of diversity within any type of coloring group or season. One thing though that tends to benefit winter colored people Whatever the skin tone, Korean, Indian, whatever the age, whatever the natural hair color is big distance between the lightest and the darkest. That doesn't mean white and black. It could be navy blue and pink, for example. It could also be platinum or diamond with black brown as Stormzy wears here. I think it's great that they went with the metals that they did. They didn't choose gold or black or some soft silver. Put these very cool shiny metals on a spring or a summer colored person, they'd look big and cold like ice chunks frozen onto the skin. But here the skin tone is just so gorgeous with these metals. You see it in the hands, you saw it in the face. In fact, around the face, I would have put in another zipper. The one looks just a little cautious. Knowing your colors helps you know, and your textures helps you know what not to buy. But it also very much helps you know where you can turn it up, where your tolerance is extremely high and adding more really only gets better. Anita is wearing custom Marc Jacobs. It's another less is more look. Beautiful simplicity that black and white excel at. They are the ultimate extremes. She wears black well. She's visible. The play of light and shadow across the decollete, the collarbones, the neck, lovely. And black repeats the colors in the eyes, so it's all quite good. The dress billows on the diagonal. There's a controlled amount of sparkle, but it's in the diamond and it's in the shoes. And then you have these white opera gloves for contrast. So there's interest in this solid black all over composition. In this lighting, the black looks kind of black brown, which I think softens the all over effect for her. The hair adds a nice area of color. I like it. I find it flatters the skin tones. It flatters the eye colors. And so with winter looks, often hair and or lips can be the only color in the whole look and it's still very colorful. Here you've got this beautiful pendant that bridges the clothing, the jewelry, and the hair color. The dress fits her well. It's interesting to me that volumes of fabric can work so well on what seems to be a narrow scale body. And part of that is coming from the fit of the dress, the structure of the dress, maybe the stark simplicity of color. It's not a busy face and so a lot of color I think could clutter her. But here, this color and jewelry simplicity seem good. The level of shine on the black, also good. Leaves the high shine and sparkle to the straps of the shoes. Lipstick repeating in the eyeshadow. Nice lip color application. I find this works better on deeper skin tones. The dark liner in neutral tones, then becoming lighter in the center. Whatever the natural lip shape, the lips have presence on the face and they're not really orange. On lighter skin tones, I tend to prefer actual color on the lips, whether the eye colors go to black or are lighter. Personal preference, Anita's South American, I believe. Very pretty pink, delicate flush in the cheeks, picking up some of the pink in the eyeshadows. That's a very nice shade of red hair for a winter. It's not squash, it's not rust, it's more of a dark wine. Even seems to me more dark rose gold than dark auburn. 
can happen naturally in some winters, good continuity with the eyebrows, and it looks cooler and redder next to the pendant, which is an excellent effect to use jewelry for to improve her own colors compared, let's say, with Viola Davis, where I thought the fuchsia dress was actually making the blush look more orange. Saying anything definite about people's group of natural coloring or season, there are 12 from pictures, is a you can't get there from here situation. You really got to have that live in-person color analysis experience and the process and the result are not related at all to skin tone. We saw people today who have very different surface appearances who absolutely belong to the same group of natural coloring. They showed us all kinds of ways of using color, neutral color, texture, shape to create very inspired looks. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you found some ideas that you can apply to your own presentation and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.